Now, I want to turn for a moment to this How Fair Is Britain report. It found that ethnically diverse Britain faces new challenges, though homosexuality was now far more accepted. The study identifies five great gateways to opportunity, revolving around well-being, education, work, security and voice in society. But in health, it says, the poorest can expect to live seven years less than the richest. In education, that boys are falling far behind, with girls outperforming them at ages 5, 16 and degree level, and that students of Indian and Chinese origin are streaking ahead at school. In criminal justice, it said that gypsy and traveller communities appear to be targeted, and women prisoners have become a prominent feature of Britain's jails. The ageing society means that women have a 50% chance of becoming a carer before they reach 59. Trevor Phillips uh, tried to put the best gloss that he could on it, but uh, he couldn't uh, gloss away some of the uh, very, very dire examples of inequality and of unfairness. Um, let me just uh, talk to a substantial part of our audience. In employment, a quarter of men of Pakistani descent are driving a taxi cab. Well, there's nothing wrong with driving a taxi cab, but when a quarter of an entire segment of our society can only get work driving a taxi cab, there may well be something in this. On the other hand, it's not entirely about race, is it? Because Chinese girls are the most phenomenal educational performers that we have in the country. And Indian girls are not far behind them. I remember a statistic from some years ago, about 10 years ago maybe, maybe a little more, that more than half of all the dentists who graduated that year were Indian girls. So we have a society where all sorts of unfairness still proliferates. It's beginning to break up in that sense, from previous, previously monolithic uh, issues of, of, of race and, uh, and sexual orientation, but it's nonetheless pretty unfair. One man who has undoubtedly studied this in more depth than I've been able to in the few hours since I got it is Randeep Ramesh, who is the social affairs editor of the estimable Guardian newspaper. Randeep, thanks very much for joining us. Good evening, George. Just tell us, as a... An overview, if you would, what you thought of this report. Did it square with what you find in your everyday work? I think it's, it's a pretty good summary, if you can call a 700-page document a summary. <laughs> um, there's an awful lot in there. But uh, to be fair to the Commission, they've spent three years combing through just about every statistic that's come out which represents the way that Britain has changed, either for better or for worse, in the last few uh, since. since well, the last three years specifically, but looked back to see how trends in society, you mentioned homosexuality and the, and the acceptance of that. Now, that's been a pretty much a feature of our society. Yes. Um, so they've, they've done a pretty comprehensive job. I think the one thing that's very difficult in the new kind of politics that Trevor Phillips found himself in was that the, the debate has moved on from inequality to this concept of fairness. And I think that's, that's quite a difficult change for a body like the EHRC, the Equalities and Human Rights Commission, to yes. deal with. Uh, and indeed, I see in your own newspaper, uh, Mr. Glover is uh, arguing today that the left should begin to accept that uh, equality is a bad thing. Well, yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not a spokesman for Julian. Um, but I, I think that he, he did touch on something, which was just, where is the debate now? And I, I do think that's where the EHRC had, uh, had to readjust their world view. But having said that, it's some, there's some pretty dramatic facts. You picked out the stuff about 25% of uh, men of Pakistani descent being taxi drivers. 17% of Chinese men are chefs in this country. Um, there are pretty formidable barriers to entry to a lot of professions. And I think despite the achievements of the, the Chinese as groups uh, in our society. You, that's a pretty damning statistic. Uh, the gap there is fairly large. So I think um, the HRC should be commended for the kind of level of detail they've got. Yeah. It's, it's just the different environment from which it was commissioned. Yes. Let's talk about race for a minute. Um, it's clear from the stat we both used 
that uh, Pakistani men uh, probably find it quite difficult to break into other professions and, uh, and end up driving a cab, which is a perfectly respectable and honourable job, and uh, many of our listeners are driving cabs this evening. But if their sons uh, become cab drivers too, which strikes me as quite likely, then we are, we are beginning to see a kind of ghettoization uh, amongst uh, Pakistani uh, labour. Yet on the other hand, we have this extraordinary, uh, to me extraordinary, um, performance of, of Chinese girls and Indian girls, and boys, by the way, but girls far more than boys. How do you account for that? Well, I think th that's an interesting question. I think one thing that we have to sort of accept is that the uh, Islamophobia may be on the rise in the past few years. We also probably have to look at the class distinctions within society. One of the th interesting things with Indian uh, so-called success, or Indian origin so-called success, is if you look at a class distinction, and that is free school meals, you find there's quite a large gap between Indian students who have, are on free school meals and those who are not. Um, and that doesn't, it's not there in, in Chinese society. That's, again, where the homogenizing effect, perhaps, of Chinese culture is, is very strong. And they mm. don't have that class distinction in education. So whenever we look at something, I mean, you're quite right to point out that ethnicity rather than race is playing a more prominent yes. role here, perhaps. Yes. Uh, we also have to look at things like class distinctions within those groups. It may be that there's a large uh, ghettoization within the, the lower social economic orders of Pakistani groups in this society. We know that they're far behind. Um, and yet, of course, you know, many cultural levels, there's not much to, to put between Bangladeshi, Indian, and, and uh, Pakistani men or women, if you see, if you see what I mean. I do. Um, so, yes, I, I think you're, you're, it's ethnicity, perhaps, which is the new color bar, if one could put it like that. Yes. That's uh, going to fuel another 700-page uh, report, I feel, uh, coming on. Let's look at the issue of class and the uh, performance of uh, children on free school meals, given only, of course, to those on, on very low incomes, uh, and uh, uh, the best possible, I think, indicator of class uh, distinctions. Um, they're, uh, of course, predictably doing uh, badly at school. Yeah, and I'm afraid that's one of the things that we, we do look at, uh, though the report looks at. Um, and one of the unfortunate things, is I, I think what I'm correct in saying, is that, that that lasts all the way through school. So you, at five, if you, I think it's 25% of boys manage to reach a certain educational standard. And at 16, it's the same 25%. Mm. And it's free school meals that play, provide the large component of that explanation. So... Um, in some ways, school is a conveyor belt of t towards success. Perhaps isn't working too well with free school meals. Although that's not an argument to remove them. Of course uh, not. And, uh, I think it's just we may be failing a section of our society, especially those which are troubled by socio-economic problems.